Hello, my name is Wesley, and today I'm going to tell you about how and why I built this fancy metal box. It's a MIDI distribution box. Essentially what it does is send signals to all of the guitar pedals on my pedal board and reconfigures them instantly based on presets that I've designed so that uh, I can instantly access any sound that my pedal board is capable of in an automatic and repeatable way, which is super useful. In my previous video, I showed off building a ground station, which houses the actual brain, the MIDI controller itself, along with a few other expression pedals and switches, but that whole setup just has one output, whereas I have eight MIDI devices on my pedal board. That's where this box comes in. It takes that one MIDI signal and duplicates it and sends it to everywhere it needs to go. Simple enough, right? Well, actually, there are no less than four different MIDI connector standards represented just on my pedal board. Synthesizer manufacturers have been kind enough to just use the original 5-pin standard or a USB cable to transmit MIDI messages, but uh, for guitar pedal manufacturers, it's the freaking Wild West out there. Total bedlam. So there are probably even more connector standards than the ones that are re represented on my board, but I've got four that I need to accommodate with my homemade MIDI box build. I'm going to configure my splitter box for the pedals that I've got, but if you decide to build a project like this, you can configure it in whatever way you need to to accommodate the pedals that you've chosen for your sound. Number one, you've got the original 5-pin connector from all the way back in the early 1980s. These connectors are a little bit clunky, but at least they're designed in a way that avoids ground loops, and for a DIY project, you're always going to know what pin goes where, and I can't say the same about all the other items on this list. Number two, you've got the Boss 200 series pedals, which uses an 8th inch TRS connector. Essentially, that's going to look like a headphone connector cable. I'll be needing one of these. Number three, we've got Chase Bliss pedals, which use a quarter inch TRS connector. I'll be needing three to four of those depending on where I land with the final configuration of my pedal board. Last but not least we've got item number four on this list, Strymon, who have the specialist and fiddliest connection out of all of the manufacturers on this list. Side note, since Chase Bliss has this weird grounded standard, I think it's probably safe to say there's no optical isolation on that either, and I'm 50-50 on whether the Boss pedal has one, so ground loops could be a potential issue. Thankfully, I haven't had too many issues with noise on this build since I have a high-quality power supply and every pedal is on its own isolated input and all the connections are as short as possible, so... Despite not all of these connections making use of MIDI's awesome optically isolated standard, we're still able to have pretty quiet connections, so I guess we're just going to gloss right over all that stuff. Okay, okay, this info dump is almost over, but stick with me just a moment longer while I explain why you would make something like this yourself instead of just buying an off-the-shelf product. Number one, all of those messed up connection standards I just described. I have not yet seen one single product that's able to address all those connection standards without also incorporating a bunch of like custom cabling and stuff like that. I've seen some boxes that are configured to work with some of those standards, but not all four at once. Number two, the sheer number of devices. Most of the MIDI splitter boxes that I've seen can handle like four, maybe six devices, but I've got eight currently, and who knows, I might want to throw some more in at some point. So right now I'm using a board that handles 8 easily and can be expanded to handle up to 10, which is perfect for me. Number 3 is the cost. These boxes can add up to hundreds of dollars if you have to buy multiple of them and chain them all together, and if you're daisy chaining these boxes there's going to be more potential points of failure, more real estate used, just more complication, hassle, and expense in general. So as a hobbyist in this space, item number 3 kind of upsets me a little bit because I know that all the electrical components that are used in these MIDI circuits are like a few dollars a piece. So I think it's kind of difficult to justify what I consider to be inflated prices in this product category. So I'm going to be going over how I saved as much money as possible and accomplished this project for as cheaply as possible. A brief disclaimer, most of the footage you're about to see I captured before I had my current camera set up, so there's going to be some quality issues and some weird autofocus stuff. Uh, I hope that the information is still worthwhile, even if there isn't as much visual clarity as I would have liked. Okay, so let's get into what products I actually used for this project. Just to be clear, there are no sponsorships or affiliations of any kind. 
Uh, the product that I found that is the heart and soul of this build is going to be this MIDI through one in, ten out splitter kit uh, by user Deft Audio on Tindy. So essentially this is designed to take one five pin connector input and then just duplicate that signal to ten five pin outputs. Obviously I'm only using five pin for some of my pedals but because we have these nice through hole uh, connections that we can do here we can just connect it to whatever type of uh, physical connector that we want using a little bit of hookup wire and you can do the same thing for whatever pedals you've got on your board uh, so this is 18 bucks for the PCB and the parts kit and then it was like five dollars shipping so I got all the guts for this thing sent to my house for like twenty three dollars and of course your mileage may vary but that to me is a way better value proposition than most of the store-bought stuff that I've been able to find online. As for an enclosure for this thing, I went ahead and went with this uh, 1590BX2 uh, enclosure from Hammond Manufacturing, uh, which is just a little bit too small, so I'm going to be trimming things just a little bit so it all fits. Important note, this power connection was not designed to go with guitar pedals. So even though it takes 9 volt, which is what our guitar pedal power supply offers, the polarity is reversed on a guitar pedal power supply, so you will need to reverse that before going in here or you will fry everything. You have been warned. So when it comes to doing the dirty on a circuit board, I have yet to find a solution that works better than uh, the age-old tin shears. So essentially we're just going to take these tin shears and trim this circuit board down a little bit. I'm just going to go ahead and take this part that has no active componentry on it and then just snip it right off. And here you can really see what I'm talking about when I say that these uh, MIDI input and output circuits are really simple. You've got this little like buffer circuit going on here, a couple of capacitors, and then literally just two resistors per output. It's nothing. These should not be as expensive as they are. That's my, that's my humble opinion and I'm sticking to it. So with these tin shoes, you just gotta get them going straight. Hopefully don't break nothing. And I try not to go too, too far. I think if you, if you snip all the way till the end, um, of the shears range you're likely to get weird twisting and buckling um, so as long as we're chill about it we should be good to go ah, there we go so you don't want to get that uh, <laughs> that uh, f4 dust in your lungs that's that that's bad okay so I'm gonna need to clean that up I don't know why I did it on my computer desk but I'm too lazy to to bring my camera elsewhere we're just gonna take our tin shears and we are just gonna trim the corners just a little bit snip Snip, snip, nice, get some of it inside my keyboard, that's perfect, and clip. So yeah, the tin shears, very, very handy for this kind of thing, because we could snap the whole board potentially, we really don't want that. There we go, and so we're not cutting any active componentry, or like, we're not cutting traces towards anything active, we're just cutting out, you know, fiberglass here essentially. Yeah, you want to use the base of the shears, and then I'm just going to use the tip to pull that free. And there we go. So now that we've got some little notches cut there, we've got our corners rounded off a little bit. Should be able to slide this right on in there. Fingers crossed. Hey, no problem. I'm skipping over like maybe 20 or 30 minutes of uh, drilling and cutting. Basically what I've done is taken those shears, um, cut away a little bit more material, then I just uh, made some dots where I knew there weren't going to be traces, uh, drilled small pilot holes, and then drilled, you know, holes that were large enough for a little M6 uh, nut and bolt to use as a standoff to hold this PCB in place. And then I just um, literally set the PCB down in the enclosure and made some little, like, pilot dents in there with the drill bit, and then, you know, in all six of the places, removed the PCB, drilled it out the rest of the way, put in some little M6 screws, and used a couple of bolts as... Uh, standoff so it'll be nice and low profile and now we should be good to go uh, we've got enough clearance that we can solder components down without them shorting out on the other side of the board and um, by putting in our chunkiest sockets the five pin and of course the TRS connector it looks like we can put the lid on this thing without anything getting in the way so I, I think we should be good to go 
Okay, so with most of the soldering out of the way, you can now sort of see where I'm starting to go with this. So basically right now I've got a capacitor that we moved over to account for this MIDI input that we're going to move over to the back. Um, so that capacitor is just moved right over to there because with a multimeter I could see that uh, it could just inhabit the same space as that other little cap that lives there. And then we just tilt the power regulator forward and everything looks good. This cap I should have tipped a little more because it does make contact with one of the posts but the outside layer of a cap is non-conductive so it shouldn't make too much of a difference. For the time being this is going to be more or less what the internal layout of this whole thing looks like. Oakley doakley neighborinos. So it's been uh, a, f a few hours of labor but essentially what we got here is the um, metal enclosure itself with cutaways for the square MIDI plugs um, and basically you accomplish that by just like cutting downwards, cutting downwards again and then making a few thin strips and just snapping them off with a pair of pliers and then sand it down a little bit and then we just drilled with like increasing drill sizes and then eventually a step bit uh, to get you know our eighth inch and quarter inch MIDI outputs so we've got room for power we've got mounting uh, sand offs for our little MIDI plug that's going to go in the back and then of course you've got all the mounting holes for the PCB itself so this thing should be basically ready to um, just bolt everything in and, and call it good um, one important thing that I noticed when uh, messing with this circuit board is that uh, the power plane or is this plane that's up here on the top uh, the copper is the internal 5 volt regulated power and on the bottom is ground so by drilling my own standoff holes here and then using conductive nuts and bolts to affix them I was actually shorting the power and ground together thankfully I noticed this was the multimeter before powering it up but that's a good reason why you should always make sure that you're kind of probing with a multimeter to make sure everything looks copacetic before you actually apply power. I'm rectifying that by taking a, a stepped drill bit to create a slight bezel there and then using a non-conductive nylon nut on the top so that the ground plane will be connected to the chassis but it won't um, you know, be connected to power, so that's a good thing. I realized that some of my best power connectors actually have like a metal barrel, and because guitar pedal power is really stupid and the barrel is positive, that also would have shorted power to ground, and, and if I had isolated the ground, it would have just made the entire chassis as part of the like positive 9-volt power rail, which is just not what you want, so I have to use a cheaper plastic connector for the power, which makes me a little bit sad. Ultimately, the soldering on this was really fast. This took kind of a while, but this was like... 20 minutes. Okay, so after getting everything seated in there, we're looking pretty good. Um, you can see we've got our MIDI input here on the back, which is going to be uh, accessible from the outside of our board, and then facing the inside of our board are all of our MIDI outputs. So we've got power right there, um, we've got two 5 pins, we've got um, five quarter inch, we'll have one of them set for a Strymon pedal, and four of them set for the Chase Bliss pedals, and then an eighth inch output for Boss. Um, so that's really sweet. If you look on the inside, I haven't yet wired everything up. Basically, I've just broken out all of the um, the MIDI output pins, and then I'm just going to look up MIDI implementation charts for all the different manufacturers and wire everything up. Um, before I install the chips, I'm just going to test out the power to make sure nothing like goes up in smoke and make sure you know power is going where it should. So that means I just double check this one more time and wire these in. Unless I mess something up, we should be uh, should be more or less ready to go here. The first and easiest connection to make is gonna be the basic five pin connector, the classic OG one. So the circuit board is gonna come with a bunch of these plastic connectors that you literally just set down in there the only way that they fit and solder them down. So it's gonna be really easy. You don't need to map any specific solder pad to any specific place, it's just plug and play. Next up, let's talk about Chase Bliss. So Chase Bliss was kind enough to give us this nice, concise 59-minute description of how to connect stuff to their pedals. I'm going to see if I can't save you a little bit of time. So here we go. First of all, the thing that plugs into your Chase Bliss pedal and also plugs into the MIDI splitter board is going to be a quarter-inch TRS cable like the one that is pictured here. The thing that is mounted into the splitter box itself is going to look like this, a TRS socket. Um, so the ones I'm using look more like this. You might have one that looks like this. Either one will work fine as long as it's stereo or TRS. So the tip is not going to be connected to anything. Chase Bliss uses that for tap tempo and we can accomplish tap tip tempo through MIDI so I wouldn't worry about the tip unless you have some super specific use case in mind. 
Next up is going to be the ring right here. So what's connected to the ring? That's going to be pin 5 on this physical implementation diagram that we have here from SparkFun. So pins 1, 4, 2, and 3 aren't connected to anything. Literally only pin 5 is going to be connected here to the ring. And so you can take a look at this diagram. You can map that to the solder pad here. And then essentially pin 5 from the solder pad that you've got on your board is going to be connected to the ring. And then that's really all you need besides the sleeve, which is going to be connected to ground. Now you might see in this chart here that pin 2 is called the shield. But pin 2 on our Tindy splitter board is not grounded. So you want to take the sleeve and connect it directly to the ground on the power supply. And since we've already uh, had to mess with the polarity on the power supply that's going into this thing, double check that you're connecting the sleeve to ground and not power. Otherwise, you could probably damage your pedal. The things are looking pretty good so far. We've got our little um, box here, and it's powered up. We've got uh, a Chase Bliss Brothers plugged into one of the Chase Bliss style outputs that I've made. You can see I've got MIDI going to my computer here. So um, in Ableton Live, I'm just going to send MIDI program change one. You can see there's actually a status light on the box that indicates when it's receiving notes. So it's just getting a little arpeggio. So that's kind of cool. And then on the Brothers itself, I'm not sure how well you can see on the camera, but there's a red light. Um, basically, like I can toggle manually here to switch between presets uh, 0, 1, and 2. So 1 is green and 2 is red and 0 is blank. So if I send it MIDI program change 2, we can see it turns red. Again, not sure how well that's coming through. And then if I um, send it the other program change. So we're successfully sending program changes here. And if the program changes are successful, I'm going to go ahead and conclude that probably all the other MIDI information will come through fine. So Chase Bliss, check. Let's compare our home rolled solution for the Chase Bliss pedals to Chase Bliss's official product offering. So here is the MIDI box that they sell on their website. So it's $53 right now. Normally it's $60, bucks, and I think that already exceeds the total price of our entire build with 10 outputs. This has three outputs, and I have four Chase Bliss pedals on this board which means I would need to get a second one and daisy chain them together. So now that's almost 120 bucks just for the boxes. We need another MIDI cable to daisy chain them. We would also have to daisy chain power. And with our home world solution, there's no need to daisy chain power or MIDI data or anything like that. It's just all together in one box. And knowing what we know about how to build a MIDI splitter circuit, very little of this $60 price tag is going towards the electronics. Most of what you're paying for here is this like super nice powder coated box, probably really great hardware. Um, and I'm sure it costs Chase Bliss enough to manufacture this to justify that price tag. But as a consumer, I don't feel that I'm getting 60 bucks worth of value out of this when I can solder something up at home and use, you know, a $15 enclosure that I found on, you know, the Hammond website. And it might not be as pretty, but it's going to function in exactly the same way and I think be equally as robust, although only time will tell. Time to talk nuts and bolts about the MIDI connection for the Boss 200 series pedal. So as I mentioned before, it is an 8th inch TRS connector, which is the same as you would see in a headphone jack. So this is what type of connector I'm going to be mounting directly into the MIDI splitter box. And then this is the type of cable that plugs into it. You'll want to make sure it is TRS or a stereo and uh, an eighth inch connector. So I was having a difficult time figuring out which pin maps to what on here until I stumbled across this video from a YouTuber called The Man Bun Metalhead who does a very great job of explaining physically how this is all connected. So I'm gonna link to his video because credit where credit is due and I hope it's not a problem that I'm ripping off this very helpful diagram that he created. Um, in this video, he makes a converter cable that takes this TRS connection and maps it over to a five pin connection on the other side. But what I'm gonna do instead of making a custom cable is to just use a headphone connector, so TRS on both sides, and then make that conversion within the splitter box itself. So you can see he says the tip is gonna be five, the ring is four, and the sleeve is three. 
So the tip, uh, which is five, is going to be our data line. And so you're just going to use your multimeter uh, to probe around on the connection that you've got and figure out which one is the tip and connect that to pin number five by, you know, mapping it over to our little spark fun uh, diagram that we've got here. Make sure you take number four and map it over to the uh, ring. And then for the sleeve, man bun metal head here says that the sleeve should be connected to pin three. I'm guessing he's pulling that from some kind of boss documentation. But according to the official MIDI standard, at least, pin three is a no connection pin. So I found this a little ambiguous and I ended up deciding to ground my pin three and my connection works fine. But if you find yourself dealing with some kind of ground loop issue, you can disconnect that sleeve and just leave it completely floating and that might help with your issues. But I can confirm that grounding it was fine. Let's take a moment to compare our home world solution to the available store-bought offerings. So this is an official Boss product here. Uh, it's $22 for the cable to convert it from the headphone style connector to the five pin MIDI connector. I think that's too much for what it is. The only available lengths are five foot and three foot. And if I'm connecting from one place on my pedal board to another place on my pedal board, a meter is way longer than what I need. I'm going to have to coil up all the excess using zip ties or try to do some kind of manual splice to reduce the length, and I don't want to do that. I think this product offering only makes sense if you're using those 200 series pedals as a desktop unit rather than putting it on your pedal board, and it seems like they're intended for pedal board use. So this just seems like a gap in the market, and I prefer my home world solution. I think it's cheaper, it's more compact, and it's going to be every bit as reliable. So I'm going to take a pass on this store-bought offering. If you thought the other guitar pedal manufacturers were all over the place with their MIDI connections, wait until we get to the absolute fuster cluck that is Strymon. So Strymon uses a quarter inch TRS connector, kind of like Chase Bliss, but electrically they are way different than Chase Bliss. So I was having a hard time figuring this out. I came across this thread in DIYstompboxes.com where one user emailed Strymon customer support and received this as a reply. And they were kind enough to put it on Imgur, so I'll include links to that. So this is a torn out piece of paper with handwritten notes that explains the circuit you have to build in between the splitter board and the Strymon pedal itself. And... I'm just going to be incorporating that into the box. So you've got the solder pads are going to be right here. And they're going to need to map to what you see here on this schematic. And then this node on the schematic goes to the tip. This node on the schematic goes to the sleeve, which is going to be connected to ground. And then you leave uh, the ring totally floating. So I'm grateful that I had all this stuff laying around already because it's essentially a standard MIDI input circuit and I've worked on some projects that use that so I already had these parts but if you don't you're definitely going to want to order these if you have any Strymon pedals. Uh, this is a couple of bucks worth of stuff. This is literally like, I don't know, maybe two, three dollars or probably even less worth of electrical components. Let's see what Strymon charges. Uh, $40 for a cable that contains that circuit. And I got to be honest with you, I just don't think that's worth it. So I'm just going to be using a cable that is TRS on both sides rather than TRS on one side and then the circuit and then MIDI. And then I'm putting that circuit in the box itself like just you know slotting it in there I have not fully priced out the diy solution but since i already had a few supplies on hand i think it was about 60 dollars total for the diy solution which is going to have 10 outputs and connect to everything all from one box with no daisy chaining so if we're going to compare that to a fully store bot solution i think we would start out with one of these ubiquitous one in four out midi boxes so that's about sixty dollars we would daisy chain that into one of these midi boxes which is another sixty dollars and that would have to daisy chain again so that's another 60 bucks. So now we're already at about $180. Then we would need one of these $40 Strymon cables, which is going to be 
220 and then we're gonna have to spend another 20 ish on the boss custom cable so that's gonna drive our price up to about 240 to get everything all daisy chained into each other so our total number of outputs from this solution would also be 10 but keep in mind that two of those unused outputs at least in my case would be locked in as chase bliss standard whereas with my custom solution uh, I haven't soldered anything to those pads yet, and if I decide to expand, I can make them be whatever I want. They're not locked in to Chase Bliss's standard. One thing that's important to keep in mind is that this schematic for Strymon calls for 5 volts right here, and I'm not positive we can get 5 volts from this through box, so we might have even more complicated stuff going on to power this little circuit that exists in this Strymon cable and none of that is an issue with the DIY solution. So I think just because of the sheer number of different connection standards that exist, rolling your own makes a lot of sense. I mean, we're looking at like maybe 60 bucks versus about $240. Uh, we're gonna need various MIDI cables and TRS cables and whatnot for both solutions either way, so I'm not really gonna price those out. Obviously, I'm biased in favor of going DIY, but I can see how going store-bought might make you feel a little bit better about the reliability of the whole assembly. And if you value your personal time highly enough, it could be that saving 180 bucks or whatever isn't worth the, you know, two full days of work or however long it takes to make something like this. So I guess do keep that in mind. I hope this is enough info to get you started if you want to make your own MIDI splitter box. I know any sane person would wrap up this whole video with a demo of the thing working, but I'm exhausted and I need this to be done now. There is a demo of the whole system working at the end of my previous video about building the ground station. Feel free to check that out. My next video is probably going to be about the Chase Bliss pedal breakout box mod that you see here because someone asked about that and I'm glad to have the interest. Woohoo, we got it's, uh, 100 subs. That's awesome. Uh, thanks for doing that. Cheers, everyone. Peace.